All right, so uh, in 2016 or 17, it, a movie came out called Justice League Gotham City Breakout. And uh, yeah, it's about Batman finally taking a vacation and Gotham City and letting Superman take over Gotham City and watch over it while he's away with Batgirl and Nightwing. Because it's uh, Batman's anniversary when he first became Batman. He even easily guessed who was chasing him while he was pursuing the villains in Gotham with Robin. And, uh, yeah. They have, like, a big party. It's very, very cool. It's just, like, seeing just a bunch of random characters there. And they had the Teen Titans there. I don't... I couldn't tell if they just had the Teen Titans there. Because the Teen Titans gunners, like... Hey, do you guys want to record a few lines for uh, this Lego movie? And they go, I'm sure. And so that's what it felt like, seeing the Teen Titans in this movie. And so, uh, yeah. So while Superman's watching over Gotham with Robin, because it's his opposed of school night, and, uh, yeah, Batman and Batgirl and Nightwing go back to when Batman first learned to be to his martial arts skills. With a woman named um Mata Mantis. So yeah, they got they got some interesting story where like we see like a flashback of young Bruce Wayne training with Deathstroke. Well, who is the person who becomes Deathstroke. And uh, yeah, they and then the rest of the movie is uh they find some weird troll thing hiding in Mata Mantis. She's wearing like a it's like someone wearing a costume. Of her and they, and they rip off the mask, or whatever, and then like then they go down a waterfall and they fall to their doom, and then I just love the scene where Nightwing and Batgirl are just like this is a bottomless pit, and then Batman's just like, no, this is just a very deep hole, and uh, yeah, they finally fall into the bat boat, somehow it's there, and uh, yeah, and then later. During Gotham, Superman basically gets tricked into getting all the Arkham villains out. Basically, Joker, we finally see him, like, actually talking. Because, like, in uh, Batman Be the League, he didn't really have, or in the other DC movies, he didn't really have much of a speaking role. And so, uh, yeah, in this movie, he gets to have a little bit of shine. I don't know who played the Joker in this movie. It's not Mark Hamill or um, Troy Baker. So, uh, I think this Joker, um, does a fine job, and he's definitely a silly version of Joker. Like, he's actually someone who, who would be called himself the Joker, who makes jokes or whatever. And, uh, basically, Joker tricks Superman by freeing all the villains by, uh, using a spoon named Spoonie. He just put marker on it, and, uh, I, I, I'm sorry to say this, but, like, Superman's kind of dumb in this universe, like... Like, you can't even take down Batman's villains. Like, if it, this was, like, the comic books... I, I'm not trying to have this fanboy moment, but, like... If Superman was fighting Batman's villains, he probably easily take them out. It, it'd be simple for Superman. But then again, the Joker is unpredictable. Just like in Justice, he tricked Superman into killing Lois Lane, and, uh... That's a darker story than this. This story's not even dark at all. It's pretty much just light in tone. Just a full-on kids movie. And uh, yeah. And then while Batman and Batgirl and Nightwing discover the hidden temple, they just, they find a bunch of these these troll f creatures. Like, we don't even know. I can't even tell what they look like. They kind of look like Frankenstein, but they were like an army of him. And it, like, if, they, if you mix the troll and Frankenstein... And so, then, uh, they then run into Bane, who, he's, like, small at first, and he kind of looks like a, a wrestler. I know Bane kind of always looked like one, but this time, he's got, like, you can see, like, his mouth or whatever, and, like, he pulls up his tubes, and then he's a giant version of Bane. We never really got that in Lego sets. The only way you can get, like, you can turn Bane into, like, a giant creature is, like, it's like in the Lego games. So that was that was neat. And so basically we find out that Bane's plan is to use this crystal thing to learn what is supposedly the forbidden move, which is I don't know, like a ninja superpower. 
Now, my problem with this forbidden move is basically Batman learned it when he was a kid. So this basically proves Batman has superpowers in a way, if you see it in the flashback. So, uh, hmm. I guess in this world, Batman just doesn't want to use this, this supposed forbidden move because apparently it just breaks apart all the Lego in this. And uh, that's what Batman doesn't want to use, I guess, because he's a fr he doesn't want to kill anybody. Well, duh, because he's Batman. And so it, while Superman's taking on the, trying to take down the supervillains, it's too much for him. He has to call in Wonder Woman. He has to call in Cyborg, and Cyborg's excited. He even wears a Robin cape, and he doesn't want Robin to tag the actual Robin to tag along is because uh, he's, it's a school night. I don't know, I couldn't really get into that. Line like what does school have to do with this movie? And so, yeah. And then like, they, I, they just get like tortured by these villains. Like they're like, and then Superman's just like, these Gotham villains are weird. And he, no wonder he doesn't hang out in Gotham that often. And so I don't, I don't really get it. Like how did they get s all defeated so easily by Batman villains? Like, that's, I don't know, I'm not trying to nitpick here, it's just, like, I don't get it, like, I know this is, you're not really supposed to take this movie seriously, since it's a kid's movie, but those are my issues. We, we do get a variety of villains, like, we see, like I said, we see Joker, we see Harley, who's voiced by Tara Strong, Tara Strong is, I can say this about Tara Strong, she's really good as Harley Quinn, like, she's spot on for voice. I think she's even on the Yap yeah, cameo where she can do her Harley Quinn voice, which is nice. Also got Poison Ivy, Scarecrow, Penguin, just the basic Batman villains, the most popular Batman villains. So, and then, and then we got Bane. I, I did like the backstory with um, Batman and Deathstroke. Like, like maybe why they're rivalries. Now I got my history of Batman and Deathstroke since you had to fight Deathstroke in uh, Batman Arkham Origins and that. That that took a while, and so that was that was fun. And uh, yeah, it's nice to see them in this movie. Like they're together. Like I feel like Batman and Deathstroke are a good would be a good duo. Even when Batman's beaten, I guess because he the Bane uses like the crystal to find out the forbidden move. Like why didn't you use it to find out who Batman is? Even though he can just rip off the mask. There's like so many other things Bane can use for that crystal. And so Bane basically just uses the crystal to mind control them all. Even when Batman's tired from all this. He does he just he almost lets Deathstroke kill him. But uh he's just like, no, it's too uh that's that's what Deathstroke does. And uh, I gotta be honest, Deathstroke kinda looks like Deadpool. They're pure pure opposites. It's rare to find a Deadpool Lego. And it's also rare to find a Deathstroke Lego. I don't know why. I just feel like saying that. And so... I think after that... The, they then, Deathstroke then teams up with Batman. And then they find a way to stop Bane. And they even erase the forbidden move on the, the, the trolls. We also got this prince troll guy. Who was actually the good guy of all the trolls. I don't know why, but the troll voices in this, the tr I think their names are Trogologs or whatever, I don't know, they're, they're, they have like English accents, I didn't really get that part in the movie, and, uh, and, uh, I'm trying to come up with things more to talk about, and, uh, back at Gotham, um, Robin then saves the day and takes out all the Batman villains with Superman, Cyborg, and Wonder Woman. Yeah, you could have got Robin the whole time, or the GCPD. We even see Jim Gordon. Like, they they have this running joke where every time, like, every time Jim Gordon's done making a speech or something, Batman is gone. But when Superman shows up, he's, he's just like, no, that'd be rude if I left. And, uh, yeah, that just shows that Superman's a total Boy Scout, and, yeah. And then, uh, I, I think it all gets wrapped up when, the uh, Batman and Deathstroke have somewhat better respect for each other, and, uh, yeah, they walk away from each other, and then, uh, yeah, they get back to Gotham, and I just like the part where, um, Batman's just like, did, did anything trouble happen while I was gone? 
and then Superman just couldn't give in. He just confesses that he was a... He totally failed protecting Gotham. And so... Yeah, the, and, and but he's afraid Batman's gonna give him the look. Even He even said that early on, and then Batman's just uh, like, whatever. And the movie kind of just ends. So, uh, yeah, what do I think of Gotham City Breakout? I mean, it's a fun movie. I think I had some nitpicks. Like, some story stuff just didn't really add up, in my opinion. But then again, it's a kid's movie, like I said. I think kids would get a big kick out of this movie. I think it's fun to watch. Like it, I got. I wouldn't mind watching it again, for sure. And if you want, I'm gonna say a personal fact about me for this movie. Okay, so my mom first got me this movie when I was in, um, I think seventh grade, and it came with this Nightwing fig, Nightwing figure, as I show in this picture. And uh, yeah, and and ever since then, she would randomly rent me it the movie at a family video a lot and I'm just like I already have this movie and the movie would get stuck a lot she even got it for me for Christmas and then she got me the same movie a Christmas later I'm just like why do you keep giving me this movie I have like free copies of this movie basically so uh, yeah that's my personal story with Batman Gotham City Breakout I certainly have good memories of this movie I honestly like this movie from the nostalgia. Like, it's very colorful. It's very sweet to watch. The cast is still variety. So we still got the variety of cast members. Also, we got Will Ferrell as a um, Nightwing, which was nice. I don't know who played Batgirl in this movie, but her. I found out something. Um, Batgirl's in the next one of the other Lego movies in this, the Lego Aquaman movie. I can't wait to talk about that one. But she's played by a different actress for some reason. Not sure what happened, but uh, I guess they just wanted a new actress. I don't know. So, um, yeah, Becker was very sweet in this movie as well. And uh, we also get a... F- I think I know why they chose this Nightwing figure as the the, the DVD set for this movie. It was a... Uh, I think they want... <laughs> it's in the flashback. Like, Nightwing, for some reason, wearing his blue Nightwing outfit. But later in the movie, he's wearing his red outfit. That was a little confusing, but uh, I didn't, it didn't bother me too much. So I would rate this movie, uh, maybe like a, a 6 out of 10 or a 7 out of 10. Pure nostalgia reasons for the likeness of this movie. Like, I like the other Lego movies more than this movie. This more feels like a Batman movie. Because Batman's more centered in these movies, for sure. Even though this is supposedly a Justice League movie. But uh, yeah, that's my in-depth thoughts of Gotham City Breakout. So tell me, have you seen this movie? If if you're a parent, have you shown your kids this movie? So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.